Hello. Hi. We are Marcella, Ella, Marzia. Uh, we come from the French speaking part of Switzerland. We are an indie folk duo. We play synth, guitar, we write our own songs. We sing in three languages, Italian, English and French. And we are two different voices and personalities that make one. Hello and welcome to the I'm Musician YouTube channel. I'm Nick, I'm here with my colleague Sue, and this week we're diving into the presence and potential of AI-driven robot artists, FN Mecca, anybody? We're also looking into Deezer's new well-being app, Zen by Deezer. We're checking out a new TikTok product as they tiptoe their way into the event space. And we'll introduce you again to indie folk duo Marzella, an indie artist from our community who you saw at the top of the show. It is 2022, so naturally we want to talk about some AI and robot artists. Specifically, we want to talk about a controversy surrounding the AI rapper FN Mecca. You may have heard about it in July already when Capitol Records signed that AI or robot rapper, which marked a point in time when the first AI artist ever was signed by a major label. Or you may have seen some of the viral TikTok videos that he's been releasing over the past couple weeks. And last week, just two weeks after being signed to Capitol Records, the rapper was dropped due to accusations of racism and cultural appropriation. And the drama does not stop. It actually continues this week because the real artist, Kyle the Hooligan, who lent his voice to the AI robot, claimed that he actually didn't even get paid for his job. And uh, one of the creators of the AI robot actually resigned after that accusation. The crash of FN Mecca is the first... <laughs> did, you, did you laugh or something? Did, did I do something? Oh my god. I thought I heard something. <laughs> The crash of FN Mecca as the first ever virtual artist to be signed and subsequently dropped by a big record label brings a lot of questions about the future and importance of virtual and AI powered artists. Will it be full of other FN Meccas clouding the space for other real musicians as opposed to actually provide collaborative tools? One way to avoid scenarios like that is to view AI artists and tools as just technologies that actually help real artists and benefit their creative process. And one such example is Phi, a fluid AI-powered artist who can change their sonic identity and appearance and is available to artists to make use of or work with when creating music. Real-life artists can play and jam with Phi and project their ever-changing nature into their music. There are and hopefully will be more experiments like that in the future that reveal the true magic of AI and its impact on the world of art and music. But one thing's for sure, these AI-driven robot artists are here to stay and what the future of this will look like is up to the ever-changing larger industry at hand. Would you let an AI rapper hop on a feature of one of your tracks? Let us know in the comments below. If all that robot and AI chat is making your head spin, as it does for some of us, it may be time to check out the new app from Deezer, Zen by Deezer, as they attempt to enter the space of health and well-being. The app should be officially launched in 2023, but in the meantime, Zen by Deezer is available on iOS and is being tested with a smaller user group in Belgium. So if you happen to watch this show from Belgium, let us know what you think, because we can't test it yet. By launching Zen, Deezer is shaping up to provide a really interesting opportunity for artists who want to enter the meditative and yoga world, but it also provides an option for artists and musicians themselves to support their mental health. Speaking of, we actually just released an article on mental health and EDM, where we dive into the well-being of electronic artists, provide some relevant statistics, and then provide you with some important tools to stay on top of your mental health on a daily basis. If you're interested in checking it out, you will find the link as usual in the description down below. If you joined us on last week's episode, we were talking about TikTok potentially entering the streaming game and taking on the giants like Spotify and Apple Music. And again, this week, there's more interesting news from TikTok, but this time it's in regards to their new feature, which allows users to tag specific locations in regards to where they are posting content from. There's a new feed called Nearby, and that one helps artists and creators to promote their events nearby wherever your fans are. And it also helps venues in local areas to actually promote their shows and find an audience to come to their shows. Pair that with TikTok's recent partnership with Ticketmaster, which would allow users to buy tickets within the TikTok platform 
And it's evident that TikTok is making some serious moves into the event space to take on Meta and its platforms like Facebook Marketplace and Facebook Groups. Want to dive further into TikTok? <laughs> Check out our guide link below as well as the video linked here in the top right corner. And I'm gonna say that, or actually we should just take that tag. Yeah. <laughs> Wanna dive deeper into the topic of TikTok? Then as usual, check out the link in the description below or check out the video in the top right corner up here. If you've been tuned to the show for the last couple episodes, you've noticed that we've been shouting out some members from our iMusician community and it has been so inspiring and we've been loving the music that we've been discovering through the community and beyond. And as with last week, we're gonna intro you to another batch of artists that we've discovered this week. Swiss indie pop band Frantic, rising Italian artist Sophie Del Baldo, Zurich-based classic rock artist Roger Rix, German neoclassical artist Lento, Venice-based multi-genre band The Andy and Mei Zhang Project, and French R&B soul artist Camille Gullin. If you haven't already checked out the iMusician community over the past couple of weeks, we highly recommend that you do so so that you can introduce yourself, join the conversation, and get to know the latest products we've been releasing here at iMusician. And we would love to feature you on next week's show. Speaking of wonderful artists, you may remember Marcella from a couple of episodes ago when we talked about their latest release, Never Again. This week, we were lucky to catch up with them to learn about their multilingual songwriting process, what's been working best for them when it comes to promotion, the inspirations behind their latest release, as well as what they have coming up for the rest of the year. We mostly record in our own home studio, and sometimes we go in a studio to record extra bits and box. Mm -hmm. But we really enjoy um, being the two of us in our own like creative bubble, and um, being able to spend the, as long as we want on a certain idea and going really like deep into it but mm -hmm. sometimes when we're in a studio and you know like every minute counts it's mm -hmm. a bit more stressful when you're not able to be as creative yeah for example for quicksands and crocodile tears the part two the second part of the song we recorded it at, at home so it's mostly voices and we didn't know what to do at the end of this song and we were like okay let's try a lot of different voices and it was just uh, then really easy to create because we were just the two of us and we had all the time we needed. The yeah. part that like kind of made me start writing this song was someone telling us that you want to play big venues, do you have a song that can be played in big venues? And then I was kind of imagining myself playing a song in front of my like dream venue and what would it sound like and how would I be moving on stage? And that kind of got the group. The idea behind the lyrics and the meaning of the song is actually a song that makes you think like, okay, I don't want to be at my worst again. I'm just gonna get my stuff together and get back on my feet. It gives us a lot more possibilities. For example, if we're writing a song and we don't know what to do with it. Maybe we, we would be like, okay, let's try to add lyrics in uh, in Italian or French. Or... Yeah, it brings kind of like another perspective on the song and yeah. another angle of approach. Every language has its kind of like different ring and different feeling when you mm -hmm. sing it. So we like exploring that. The most important elements for our, our promotion, I think at first, was Spotify when we released Lovely Bird in 2018 because it was immediately picked up by editorial playlists so we quickly got into like the viral 50 France playlist and that meant a lot of streams so then we approached radios with that argument like hey lots of people are listening to our song why not like broadcast it and that's when they started playing our music on radios and since then they've like really been a massive support to us mm -hmm. so yeah, I'd say Spotify and then radios, yeah. We worked on a documentary. We created the whole soundtrack for it. It's called Cascadeuse, and it's gonna be in cinema uh, from November yeah, this Sunday. year. Uh, we've got a big show coming up at the Rocking Chair in Vevec on the 6th of October, and we've got a lot of different singles. That are ready to release. Yes. <laughs>
Thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you want to hear more from Marcella, which, like for example, the song you're hearing right now, then head down to the link in the description below. And uh, while you are down there, drop us a like and also maybe don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because there's more content like this and all sorts of music business content coming your way and you don't want to miss that. We'll see you in the Ammunition community and right here on YouTube in a couple weeks. Dimmi a che cosa pensi?